If you clicked on this video, you probably just went through a horrible date. I don't know why we keep doing this to ourselves. Well, here are five red flags to look out for so you can avoid your next terrible date. Stay tuned for that. Most of us have been on dates before. Some good, some bad, and some downright ugly. We seem to repeat the exact same mistakes over and over and somehow expect a different result from the person that we're going on a date with. Well, today I'm gonna to give you five red flags to look out for that are absolutely non-negotiables for me and they should be for you too. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. We really appreciate it, I really appreciate it. Now on to the rest of the video. Whether you're in a blind date, a first date, or the 25th date, I find that all these tips are absolutely relevant to anyone. At the core principle of all of this, you need to show yourself enough respect and set enough boundaries for yourself to adhere to these things so that you actually have standards and boundaries to go by. Dating red flag number one, be punctual. There's a reason why this one is the first <laughs> one with an asterisk, okay? Nothing is worse than being late or not showing up to a date. Um, be on time, be early if you can. All right, slightly early, not eager beaver early, like you're there two hours prior to that, scouting out seats. Be there on time or be there 15 minutes early. Okay, do not be late. You are trying to give off a first impression. First impressions matter whether you like it or not. And not showing up punctually for something that you should be caring about really makes a diff big difference, okay? I'll give you an example of this. There was one time that I went on a date with a girl um, in a city that's not so far from here. I drove to the restaurant, I got us a table, I was on time, was well-dressed. She was actually 35 minutes late, no, 25 minutes, let me correct that, okay? She lived down the block, maybe about a six minute drive from that place. I lived 25 minutes from that place. According to her, she said that she got the, she went to the wrong restaurant because there was two Thai restaurants on the same block. Okay, if you believe that, then sure. But it's this day and age, I find that kind of ridiculous to believe just because we have GPS. I sent her the exact same address. She could even verify the name of the restaurant in order to not make that mistake. But anyways, it left a sour taste honestly in my mouth because when she came into the date, I was about to honestly leave and then she showed up and she apologized. We went on through the rest of the date, the date was okay, but my impression of her was that she actually just didn't give a shit about the date whatsoever. And it's the same thing as, you know, you have to ask yourself, would you show up late for a job interview for a job that you really wanted? No, the answer is no. You'd probably be there on time, you'd probably be there early. And that's probably the biggest takeaway that I had, and maybe you had if you've experienced this before. If someone's not willing to carve out enough time for you to make it on time, they are probably not that into you. Sorry to say that, but that's the truth. They're going to take common courtesy of planning out their transportation routes, the subway schedule, the traffic patterns, uh, whatever, you know, leaving work early, just to make that appointment if it matters enough to them, okay? And it should matter enough to you to set those kind of boundaries and standards. I think I read one Reddit post one time where uh, a guy was asking, oh, my date was almost late an hour. She did text him to let him know that she was stuck in traffic or in public transportation but he got fed up and he honestly left. And I was really proud of him that he actually did that, even though he's an anonymous you know, Reddit user. He stood up for himself and he said, enough is enough. She actually ended up showing up at the date location and she said, oh, I wish you had told me so that I could turn around. But she was the one that was late to begin with. So, you know, the infraction happened. But please respect yourself, respect your time. Someone else should respect your time. If you're going to meet at eight o'clock, meet at eight o'clock, end of story. Tip number two, dress to impress. Okay, this one is near and dear to my heart. I am the type of person that when I go out on a date, I try to dress at least reasonably 
well put together, nice. you know, nice clean shoes, gelled hair, shaved, showered, okay, smelling not like a trash can, you know, clothes that actually fit, that are clean, that are not smelly, don't put on your used underwear from three days and turn it around and pretend that it is clean. That is non-hygienic and should never be done in any situation, okay? I'll give you an example of this and why it matters. There was one time that I showed up on a date wearing a shirt similar to this, but it was brown. I was wearing brown boots and blue jeans. Nothing too fancy, but uh, you know, it was something that I had prepared and I was showered, gelled hair, everything, came to the date. Um, I messaged her and I think she was scrambling because she forgot about the date. This girl showed up to the cafe wearing her pajamas, what I suspected to be her pajamas, and I'll tell you why. She had a hoodie on. The hoodie, I could tell, was a sleeping hoodie because the actual design of the hoodie was faded, okay? Her hair was completely disheveled, like she had just had bed head, okay? She had food stains on her actual hoodie, no joke, actual food stains. She was wearing sweatpants that were, I, I guess apparently her sleeping pants, and get this, she was wearing flip-flop slippers. Like, sorry, not flip-flop slippers. She was wearing comfortable, cozy slippers, like the ones that you wear in the house that have teddy bears on them, okay? It's not something that you wear outside generally in public. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying that I was like dressed in Versace head to toe, but I, at least I was dressing enough to impress my date. The least I should expect is the same reciprocated from her. Okay, and that was obviously not the case. First impressions matter. Dates, a lot of times, are basically relationship interviews. Dress to impress. Doesn't mean that you have to go and spend a whole bunch of money and dress to the nines, but wear a nice shirt, okay? Put on a nice dress. Whatever you know you have in your wardrobe, use to your best effect. You know when you look good, you know when you look bad. Be hygienic, do that right, and please, for the love of God, don't wear something with food stains and have disheveled hair, okay? On to tip number three. So tip number three is gonna be a controversial one, but I think this is really important for a lot of people that are in the dating market. Don't come with your own agenda or respect someone else's agenda. Okay, so what I mean by this. So oftentimes when I go on dates, because I'm a little bit older, sometimes I'm dating women that are similar to my age or maybe a little bit younger, okay? They're at the point on, in their dating lives where their biological clock fair or not fair, is basically ticking. And they're coming in white hot with an agenda to find out what you're about, what your plans are for her, where do you see stuff in five or 10 years, do you want kids, where do you wanna put down a mortgage, stuff like that, okay? That's certainly not how I'm wired and I don't think that a lot of men are wired that way as well, or perhaps women. My point is this, it's okay to respect your agenda, but it's also okay for that other person's agenda to exist as well. Okay, you shouldn't have to compromise your agenda to be able to accommodate someone else. And really, at the end of the day, there is no way that you can get to know someone over a mojito for five minutes and decide the rest of your lives together. That's just not possible. That's exactly what actually happened to me. So uh, I'll tell you a story about this. I went on a date with a girl in Toronto. This was quite a few years ago. Beautiful girl. She messaged me first on a dating app and she asked me, she said, oh, I should have brownie points for messaging you first. Okay, kudos to her, fantastic. So we made a date to meet at a sushi restaurant in North York and we get there. I meet her outside, fantastic. I give her a hug. We go in, we sit down, table for two. Server brings around the menus. The server hasn't even come around to ask us for drinks, okay? She asks me, so you're in commercial real estate. I think you, you know, how's that going? Oh, I do reasonably well for myself. I knew what she was alluding to. She was really alluding to the fact if I'm successful, if I'm making a lot of money, how much of a baller I am, okay? 
Yeah, she could probably be alluding to my actual career, but based on our messages prior to that, it was very much leaning on the fact of sizing me up, whether or not I'm a good mate or a bad mate. Okay. Second thing she asked me, this is all prior to ordering drinks, okay. Second thing that she asked me was whether or not I'm looking for marriage, okay. Haven't ordered appies, haven't ordered entrees, have barely sat down on my seat to warm my seat with my butt, okay? And she's asking me literally 20 questions. I respond to her and I say, well, you know, I'm open to it, but I haven't, you know, haven't exactly, you know, I, I'm looking to find the right one. I'm not gonna, you know, rush my decisions, okay? Third question that she asked me was whether or not I want kids and how many kids. I mean, obviously these questions were completely loaded and she was motivated to be able to find you know a partner really really quick i get it you know from i'm chinese she was chinese as well from our culture usually she would be considered someone that is probably a little bit too old to get married so she was probably facing a lot of familial pressure behind closed doors that i will never experience or i haven't experienced yet okay so i understand and I do give her brownie points and bravery points for kind of like being very upfront with her motives. But at the same time, like, get to know me a little bit. Like, can we order appetizers and mojitos before we discuss the next 50 years of our lives if we're gonna have our silver and gold anniversary, okay? Because you will turn off a whole bunch of people by doing that. And I just wasn't feeling it for the rest of the date, honestly. You know, it was just, how much do you make? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have kids and how many? And that was kind of like done. How, how about we talk about what our favorite movies are? You know, how about we talk about what kind of music we enjoy listening to or uh, what's your favorite type of cuisine? You know, something simple to get to, you know, a little bit of icebreaker before we, you know, go to these life altering questions. So that's tip number three. Don't come in with an agenda, okay? And respect someone else's agenda. Tip number four, keep it casual. Okay, so this is probably going to be another controversial topic. Uh, often I see, you know, guys, and this is mainly guys, guys trying to impress women by whining and dining them, taking them to like the fanciest restaurants in the world, dropping, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred bucks, a thousand dollars on dinner um, and an evening out with like flowers and everything like that. I get that there's something chivalrous about that, but at the same time, please understand, keep it casual. Okay, so many times that I see people get too worked up over a day trying to plan the whole nights. I'm guilty of this as well. Just keep it casual. Go for a nice walk in the park, plan some activities where you bring some bread and feed the ducks. You know, play a fun game, you take a journal and you ask each other 20 questions, you record that stuff, do sketches together, go to paint those mugs that you see. You know, I've been to those paint shops where you pick out a mug and you paint them and then they kind of put them on the fire and stuff like that. Coffee dates are okay, guys. You know, like getting to know someone with a follow-up activity is all right. Any person that tells you that that's not sufficient probably doesn't deserve a place in their lives and probably has an agenda, okay? I get that some people are looking to be a little bit more wowed and sure, you can get a little bit creative with a coffee date and go for maybe a nice walk or stroll or actually pick up the coffee to go to some place like a pier or something like that, prepare a nice seat, like nice picnic, make your own coffee and bring it, sure, you know, and uh, show her some of your artwork if you're in art. Do something creative, there's always a way, but it doesn't have to be the nights. So please keep it casual, it's supposed to be fun, it's a first date, it's, you know, it, it, keep it casual, you know, it, the more that you get on yourself and pressure yourself to kind of perform at the highest ability or impress at the highest ability, you're just going to get in your own head. Sure, there's gonna be some ancillary examples or outlier examples where someone's going to be late or they're not gonna be able to show up for some reason. But at the end of the day, these core principles, if you follow them, you're gonna have a way better dating career than what you're having right now. Best of luck to everyone out in the dating market. It is honestly a rough one out there. This is TRG signing out, and I hope you tune in for the next video. We're gonna be producing content on a weekly basis from now on. At least that's the goal and that's the aim. 
and I really hope you liked my content. I want to hear from all of you. What are five big red flags that you have that are non-negotiables for you? Please write in the comments below. Um, please don't forget to subscribe, like, subscribe, and comment below. Thumbs up the video if you can. It really helps the algorithm grow. As I was mentioning, we're trying to save the world one step at a time. We cannot do that without you. I want to spread the knowledge and spread the word to everyone because everyone goes through these situations. It's not just myself. It's not just you that's listening right now. It's your neighbors. It's your family. It's your friends. And we want to increase the reach out to all of them. That's what we want to do. Anyways, thanks so much for your time. Peace.